With respect to intelligence and its evolution, I do came it came fairly, I mean, it's very, very recent, right? Um, I am surprised that it evolved. Yeah. I, I find it fascinating to think about all the worlds out there. Like, say, there's a thousand planets like yeah. Earth and what they look like. I think Nick Lane was here talking about some of the early parts, right? Yeah. Like, okay, he expects uh, basically very similar life forms, roughly speaking, and bacteria-like things in most of them. Yeah. And then there's a few breaks in there. I would expect that um, the evolution of intelligence intuitively feels to me like it should be a fairly rare event. And there have been animals for, I guess maybe you should base it on how long something something has existed. So for example, if bacteria have been around for 2 billion years and nothing happened, then going to your carrier is probably pretty hard because um, bacteria actually um, came up quite early in Earth's evolution yeah. or history. Um, and so I guess, um, how long have we had animals? Maybe a couple hundred million years, like multicellular yeah. animals that like run, run, crawl, etc. Um, which is maybe 10% of um, Earth's lifespan or something like that. So I mean, maybe on that time scale is actually not, not too tricky. I still feel like it's still surprising to me, I think intuitively, that it developed. I would maybe expect just a lot of like animal-like life forms doing animal-like things. Uh, the fact that you can get something that creates culture and knowledge yeah. and accumulates it is, is, it is surprising to me. That, okay, so there's so there's actually a couple of interesting follow-ups. If you buy this uh, sun perspective, that actually the crux of intelligence mm -hmm. is animal intelligence. What the quote he said is, if you got to the squirrel, you'd be most of the way to AGI. Mm -hmm. um, then we got to squirrel intelligence, I guess, right after the Cambrian explosion mm -hmm. 600 million years ago. It seems like what instigated that was the oxygenation event 600 mm -hmm. million years ago. But immediately, the sort of like intelligence algorithm was there to like make the mm -hmm. the squirrel mm -hmm. intelligence, right? So it's suggestive that animal intelligence was like that. As soon as you had the oxygen in the environment, you had the eukaryote, you could just like get the algorithm. Um, I, I, maybe there was like a, sort of an accident that evolution smelled upon it so fast, but I, I don't know if that suggests it's like actually quite, uh, it, at the end, going to be quite simple. Yes, basically it's so hard to tell, right, with any of yeah. this stuff. I guess you can base it a little bit on how long something has existed or how long it feels like something has been bottlenecked. Yeah. So Nick Lane is very good about describing this like very apparent bottleneck in uh, bacteria and archaea yeah. for two billion years. Nothing happened. Like extreme diversity of chemical, of biochemistry, and yet nothing that grows to become yeah. animals two billion years. Um, I, I don't know that we've seen exactly that kind of an equivalent with animals and intelligence, uh, to your point, right? But I guess maybe we could also look at it with respect to how many times we think evolution, uh, certain intelligence has like individually sprung up. That's a really good. That, that, that's a really good thing to investigate. Maybe one thought on that is I almost feel like, um, well, there's the hominid intelligence, and yeah. there's I would say like the bird intelligence, right? Yeah. Like ravens, etc., are extremely clever. Yeah. But uh, they actually their brain brain parts are actually quite distinct, and we don't have that much. Um, existence. So maybe that's a slight event of, uh, there's a slight indication of maybe intelligence springing up a few times. And so in that case, you'd maybe expect it more frequently or something like that. Yeah. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks.